Today I'm going to set up a basic document in InDesign. To get started, I'm going to go to File Menu and choose New or type Command N on my keyboard, which will give me a new document. I want to make sure I select Document and not Book or Library. Uh, that will give me a basic page. If I have preview checked, I can see what I'm looking at. If not, uh, it won't show me the page. If it looks the way I want it to, um, I could change the number of columns at this point. I'm going to leave it one column for now. This is just going to be the absolute most basic. Uh, it's going to be a single page, so I can uncheck facing pages. If I'm working in a document like a book or a magazine, and it's got more than one page, obviously I would leave facing pages checked. I can decide how many pages I'm going to include in my document and whether I want to start the page numbering at page one. Everything looks as it should, so I'm going to click OK. Um, automatically, InDesign will put me into measurement units of picas. Today I want to measure in inches, so I'm just going to change that by going to the InDesign menu, navigating to Preferences, scrolling to Units and Increments, and just changing measurements where it says Ruler Units. I'm going to change horizontal to inches and vertical to inches and click OK. OK. Stuff keeps disappearing from my menu, so I'm just going to make sure that I put the pages back in there. OK, everything got pushed to the side. There we go. Sometimes menus get pushed around. If you ever don't see what you're looking for, you can always just go to Window Menu and make sure whatever you're looking for is selected. Uh, sometimes my stuff winds up off the screen. Pages menu will show um, which page I'm working in. I've got a single page. I, I'm putting nothing onto the master pages. Master pages I use for repeating elements and things that appear on every page. I'm just working with a, a just a single page document like a flyer. So I'm starting on page one and I'm going to make sure I've double clicked on that and make sure this is grayed out as opposed to that being grayed out. I'm going to make sure this has the gray which would indicate that I am now working in page one. Once I do that I'm going to go to the toolbar and select my type tool. Once I select my type tool, I'm just going to draw an area which will contain my headline uh, because I don't know what I'm putting in yet for a headline. Uh, with caps lock selected, I'm just going to type the word headline and I'm going to change the default font is Minion Pro. I don't want to use the default font today, so I'm going to change that font to something else. I have a choice. There's two different places I can do that. Assuming the text is selected, I can change it up here from the path bar, or I can use the character panel. If I don't see the character panel, I can nav navigate over to Window Menu, go to Type and Utilities, and make sure that character is checked. So I'm going to pick a basic sans serif font, bold because it's a headline, and 12 point is not a very large size. So I'm going to bump that up. Um, I'm using the presets. If it doesn't work for me, I can uh, set it to something else. So 65 point in this case looks like it's going to fit nicely. If I want to make it stretch all the way over to the right margin, I can use the up arrow of the width to kind of push it out. Okay, 101 points, and it's looking a little boring, so I'm just going to increase the height of the letters. Okay, so 150 point. And because that is now uh, bumped out of my margin, I'm just going to use my down arrow key 
to make sure that it fits within the margin that's on the page. Anything that's over past that little red margin line you see, reddish or purplish, depending on uh, how your monitor's calibrated. Anything you see that's outside that margin container. Think of where the margin is. Everything inside the margin is in the live area, and everything outside of the margin isn't in the live area, and it might get chopped off if you print it. So that is my headline. I'm just going to create another placeholder for text and I'm using my ruler as a guide and dragging down the same way that I made the container for the headline. I'm not sure where the text is yet for this. I can copy and paste from somewhere else if I have text. I don't have any text yet. So a lot of times uh, if I'm building something before I have the actual content, what I will do is I will go to Type Menu and choose Fill with Placeholder Text, which is going to give me something that's called Greeking or Lorem Ipsum, and it's just a whole load of text in Latin. The next thing I want to do is add not a rectangle um, add a placeholder for my image yeah I can actually use rectangle frame tool it'll depend on the size of my image um, and now I have to find something that's going to fit in that image I'm just going to place the image on the lower left And once I have that selected, I'm going to choose Place. And find an image. Okay, so I have a lovely red rose here. That's the one I'm going to double click. And the rose gets placed neatly into that frame that I have built. Except it's covering the type, so that looks kind of nasty. So if I want to text wrap that, sometimes I have to select both the image and the text. I can hold down Shift and select both. I'll go to Window menu and choose Text Wrap. And decide how I want to wrap the text around my image. If I have all of these set to zero inches, there's going to be the, the text is wrapped around my image, but it's bumped right up against it. To change that, I want to increase the space around the image. If I have this selected, it will increase it uniformly. If I deselect it, like say, I don't know, look at that, and then ooh, look over there. I want more space over here on the right-hand side. I want less space over here because I want everything up against the margin. So I can increase that until it looks visually acceptable. And that's the basics of setting up an InDesign document.